And now to a sad story where 10 people have died and seven other injured after a story building collapsed in the Badon Oyo state capital. Residents who expressed shock called on government to take immediate action to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Senior reporter Lido Iwale was there in our report. <laughs> Residents of Jigede, Oloron Shogu area of Ibadan, were thrown into mourning after a dilapidated single-story building collapsed, killing 10 individuals and injuring seven others. <laughs> Members of the community confirmed the incident occurred around 12 a.m., causing widespread panic and leaving residents in shock and disbelief. They revealed that the building served as a makeshift facility for caring psychiatric patients, and one of the victims was a visitor. What I can say is that Wale came to visit a girl which he was dating when he met his untimely death. If he had not come, this wouldn't have happened. Although there is a limit to what the government can do, however, we would like to still implore the government to help us work on dilapidated buildings like this. The community was left traumatized with victims, including children laid to rest in a mass burial. Government officials described the incident as heartbreaking and pledged to take all necessary measures to prevent similar tragedies in the future. That's why His Excellency uh, Government Chair Makinde approved recently uh, what I will call uh, uh, building amnesty, whereby buildings in the state are expected to have a building approval. Uh, I can tell you without any search that this building affected doesn't have any building approval. And the um, government, in our local government, through the director of works, will still be moving around and check some buildings which are not conducive for living. The police in their reaction said it has put adequate security in place in the area to prevent hoodlums from taking over the incident scene. Aladio Iwali, TVC News, Ibadan. The 2024 Nigeria Immigration Service Annual Controller General Conference is holding in just. The three-day event is designed to exchange ideas, provide solutions, create windows of opportunity to improve border and migration surveillance, as well as enhancing national security and economic development. Senior reporter Funam Joshua has details. Officers of the Nigeria Immigration Service from the senior and junior cadres across the country are converging on just the Plato State Capital for this year's Controller General Annual Conference. Repositioning the Nigerian Immigration Service for enhanced national security and economic development is a theme of the conference. The Minister of Interior Olubumi Tunji Ojo is the special guest of honor here. The Controller General of the Service came in and up while delivering her keynote speech highlights some of the efforts and achievements recorded under her leadership in line with their mandate. We will explore strategies to promote socio-economic inclusiveness. We will address cross-cutting issues and thus strengthen regional cooperation. In the same vein, given the great developmental potentials and benefits of migration, Effective and efficient border governance and migration management will remain potent tools that will be deployed by our nation in this changing global arena. The PCA is being here, here for the CG customs being here in person shows that the border agencies are finally coming together as one in the Nigeria Immigration Service says it will continue to strive at all times to ensure an equitable balance between free movement facilitation and security. Phnom Joshua, TVC News, Joss. Governor of Yobe State, May Malabuni, has presented the 2025 Finance and Appropriation Bill to the Yobe State House of Assembly in Damaturu. 
The budget, which proposes 320.811 billion naira, is tagged Economic Consolidation and Poverty Reduction Bill. Michael Oshoma has details. The arrival of Governor May Malaboni at the Yobe State House of Assembly kickstarts the event. <laughs> On the budget, the economic sector receives 156 billion for costing on road projects to complete 17 ongoing projects and starting 11 new projects, including drilling solar powered boreholes and improving water circulation. Governor Boni speaks more on the areas of priority in the budget. A total sum of 320. 20 billion 811 million naira has been proposed to finance the capital recurrent and personal expenditure. Especially, specifically, the sum of 144 billion 36 million 787 thousand, representing 44.9 percent, is proposed as recurrent expenditure, while the sum of 176 billion 774 million 213 thousand naira representing 55.1 percent is allocated for capital expenditure the social sector according to him receives 108 billion prioritizing education rehabilitating schools constructing new facilities and improving the school feeding system. <laughs> he also assured that construction of new health facilities, upgrading existing ones, and providing modern equipment is included. Governor Boni commended President Tunubu for his doggedness in his style of leadership. The speaker, honorable members, distinguished invited guests, I would like to use this opportunity to once again register our profound gratitude to His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on his commitment to providing leadership to the nation at a very difficult time and finding solutions to the security and economic challenges militating against the progress of the country. This is a sixth budget Governor Boni is presenting to the State House since he assumed office as Governor. Michael. Oshoma, TVC News, the Maturi of Estates. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission has made a startling revelation of how cartels in the poultry and packaging industries manipulate the markets to keep prices high despite government's interventions. The Commission CEO to Jibelo disclosed this at a stakeholders meeting in New York in continuation of the FCCPC nationwide advocacy against exploitative pricing in the market. The FCCPC has been touring cities to host these kinds of engagements. The association decided henceforth, today, everybody must sell at 60,000. It is not done. This is a packed audience with captains of industries, MSMEs, market leaders, farmers, transporters, service providers, and NGOs. They are here to engage on the growing prices of commodities and ways to end exploitation in market prices. The EVC and CEO of the Commission believes the poultry cartel are dictating the prices for the smallholders to sell their products. We used to sell a day old chick for between 4 and 80 naira and 590 naira, and they still made the profits, but not after the arrival of two big players in the market. They brought in big money and expanded the market, and expected it. they were soon in the position to control 80 to 90 percent of the poultry market in the city. I have to contend with the cartel in the packaging, in the packaging sector. The cartel consists of five players who are in the business of importing and providing local manufacturers with packaging materials. The consumers on their part complain about the impact of the ridiculous increase in prices on their businesses, finances and livelihoods and call for urgent government interventions. Nigeria is still getting to attune to the situation and they enter into power session and begin to increase the electricity bill. As if that is not enough, they are trying to increase VAT. All this issue is what brings about the crisis in the market except this double taxation of goods is checked 
There's nowhere. And this is carried out by government agencies. I had a situation where within one week, vegetable, a liter of vegetable oil per carton was increased from 28,500 to 32,000 Naira to 38,500 to 45,000 Naira within a week. It is hoped that exploitative pricing in the country will be checked and the prices of commodities will be affordable. Miriam Daniels, TVC News, Uyo, Akari Boom State. The Minister of Works, Dave Umayi, says work on the Ondo State Axis of the lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project will soon begin. The Minister gave the assurance while speaking with stakeholders on the specifications of the Coastal Highway project during a town hall meeting at the Government House, Akure, the state capital. Adejim Radio, what's that? To develop. It is the unveiling of the details of the 63-kilometer axis of Undo State in the ongoing construction of the lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. The Minister of Works, Dave Umayi, highlighted the federal government's commitment to infrastructure as the vital national investment. A stated that President Bola Tinubu is dedicated to the sweet completion of the coastal highway. The minister promised that work will soon commence on the Undo State segment of the coastal highway project. He commended Governor Loki Ayidatiwa for his efforts towards making the project a reality in the state. I've always said that the commitment of Mr. President in this four legacy project is not just constructing roads. No, it's an investment. It's just like you're expanding the power base. We are rephasing the projects according to the amount of fund that is available. We rephase it phase one, phase two, phase three. We are unveiling this today. We will conclude the design within the month of November. And I'm sure that we will be here in December to flag off the construction. We will do that. Governor Ayidati, on his part, noted that the expansive highway we connect several states. He added that the project will also facilitate the improved cross-country connectivity and strengthen trade relations. So I want to thank you, Mr. President. No wonder he's also supporting us, you know, economically to ensure that Ayeturo is safe, is protected, and this road that will bring about huge economic benefit to the state starts at this time. Mr. President, thank you. We believe this project is going to be of huge benefit to us. That is why we are going to cooperate with the federal government as represented by the Minister of Works and all the contractors that will be working on our shop. The governor assured that the project will not be less solely to contractors but will be closely monitored to ensure effective utilization and sustained progress. I'm the General Radio, TVC News. First with the governor.